Hello everyone, this is Adam Anderson, Product Trainer at Maple Systems. Welcome back to our EB Pro training series. In the last video we set up a tank level indicator and bar graph. And so far in this training series we've only been using the local HMI memory. You can see here in the address sidebar which registers we've used. If we switch to the bit mode you can see we've used just one local bit. Now we'll discuss how to connect to a controller or PLC from your Maple Systems HMI. The first place to check is our website for full instructions and a list of every device and controller that is supported. So if we go to maplesystems.com under support, select controller info sheets and you'll arrive at this page. So if you look here you see a list of over 300 different types of controllers and PLCs that we support. Looking in the HMI column specifically, you can find the drivers that are built into EB Pro. And so we are going to use the Modbus TCP master driver in this case. The third column is the document that we need. So let's take a look at that. This is our controller information sheet for Modbus TCP IP master. So there's a number of things in this document. It talks about communication cables. It'll just be an Ethernet cable for this example. It talks about accessible PLC memory, registered memory, and discrete memory. It talks about the Modbus function codes. And we also have some recommended settings for EB Pro for you. For example, the port number for Modbus should be port 502. And when we first add the driver, in EB Pro, it will already have that set. Now let's go back to EB Pro and we'll add a communication driver. So we're going to go to the Home tab and click on System Parameters. We have just one device listed, which is our local HMI. Now we can click on the New Device or Server button here. And from Device Type, we can select from a long list of manufacturers and types of protocols. Modbus TCP IP master is what we're going to use here. So the HMI will be the master and the Modbus device will be the slave in this situation. And the interface is Ethernet. If you click on the settings button next to the IP address line, then you can set an IP address. We're going to use a Modbus simulator first. So we'll go ahead and enter in a local IP address of 127.0 zero one. The port number is already entered in for us and there's a couple other settings here that you might want to be aware of. The timeout. Timeout is how long the HMI will wait before it assumes the connection to your Modbus device has been lost. At that time it will show you a warning. Device no response. Turnaround delay is a optional parameter and if you set this to some value like 5 5 milliseconds, then the HMI will wait an additional 5 milliseconds between each polling request to the Modbus device. Generally, we can leave these as the default values. So we'll click OK here. We have our IP address and port set up. You can give the device a name at the top here if you want. We'll leave this as is and then click OK here. Now we've finished adding our first communication driver to talk to a controller. So we can click OK, and just as we've seen for numeric objects and bit lamps and toggle switches, we know how to add those from the object tab here at the top. Now we're going to go over to our new window, and instead of looking at local word or local bit addresses, we're going to look at Modbus addresses in this device that we're talking to. This is our new window and we've set some text up here in advance so that you know what we'll be adding into these spaces. This is a table which you can set up here from the object menu. You can set any number of vertical or horizontal divisions and you can enable automatic alignment. So you can simply drop an object into the center of a cell and it will be aligned in the center horizontally and vertically. So we're going to go ahead and copy over some of these objects that we've set up. First we'll copy over some input registers numeric displays. Let's take a look at this first one. 
So normally you just go to Object and select Numeric Display to pull this up. The read address, the device is now listed here as Modbus TCP IP Master as the second option. And 3x, this is equivalent to the 300,000 range in Modbus terms. A1 would be the first register within this device range. And if we click settings, we can see more information about the range. And we can see it goes from 1 to 65535. So this is a one based index. And so if you have a Modbus address 300,000 zero for your Modbus device in the read address in EB Pro, you would select 3x1. And that will read from the very first available input register on that Modbus device. So we'll click OK here. We can take a look at the 3x double. We're reading from 3x double 2. And the double will simply read two words worth of data at a time. Next, we're going to copy over some holding or output registers. And these will be numeric input objects. For these, we're allowing input. And we're choosing from the 4x device type here. So that would be 400,001 is the first address. And a 4x double would read two registers starting at this reading address. So it would go from 400,002 to 400,003. OK, now we're going to add some bit lamps. These are going to be for discrete inputs. The first one is going to be a 1x1 or 100,001. And when we do a read operation from our HMI, we are going to be reading 16 bits at a time. That's all described in the controller information sheet. If you look at the notes under each section. So under the discrete memory, we have notes about this here. And it says that we'll be reading 16 bits at a time if we pick the 1x or 0x. To get around that, if you have a single bit that you need to read, and the other registers are not configured or not accessible, you can use the single bit type. So here we have an example of that. We're selecting 1x single bit 17. So we don't need 1x 18 to be available in order to be able to read just this bit from the PLC. So we'll click OK there. Now we'll add some output coils. So here what we've got is a 0x1. So we can read and write to this coil. So we're picking 0x1 there. Again, it will try to read 16 bits at a time when you use standard 0x. And 0x single bit will just read one single bit or write one single bit at a time. So we have 0x single bit 17 selected. At this point, we're ready to run our simulation. We have our Modbus simulator program open now. And we're going to run the offline simulation first. After that we'll run the online simulation and you can note the difference. Remember offline simulation it will not try to communicate with your PLC and online simulation will. So we'll go to the new Modbus window that we've set up and let's go first to the analog inputs so the 300,000 range and we're going to change the value. We're going to force the value to 50 here. Notice in our offline simulation, we do not see that value show up. Similarly, if we enter a value into the holding register in 4x1, and we switch over to the holding registers here, we do not see that value show up. Now let's do the online simulation. and we'll establish the communication between our Modbus device and our simulated HMI. Now at this time we see that 50 in the analog input and we can enter another value in the next register and it will show up at 3x2 and let's go over to our holding registers let's enter in a value in the 4x2 
and we see that show up here. And we'll switch over to our discrete memory. So our digital inputs first. We'll go ahead and turn this one on. So this is 1x1. So that's now on. And we'll turn on the other one at 1x17. So this is now on as well. And let's look at our coil outputs. And we can toggle these on and off. So now we've demonstrated we have full communication established between our HMI in online simulation mode and our Modbus master device. In the next episode, we'll continue to discuss and show you different features relating to our bar graphs, dynamic scaling, and low and high alarm levels. Stay tuned for the next episode.